This is the third video in our series, Getting Ready for the We the People competition. This video is for question number three. Take a moment now and make sure that you are at our Moodle site for Mr. Chambers' government class. If you need to, pause the video at this point and get to the website. And when you're ready, press, press play and we'll continue. Once you get to the government website, go on down to Unit 3, and we're going to click on the We the People Documents folder. And once this pops up, there are three movies, one for each question. You are first going to click on the December Hearing Questions uh, Word document, which will be down at the bottom. We'll click on that. It may be a little bit different for you, since you're not using an Apple Mac. And we need to go to page three, which is the third question. So basically what we have here, we have your prompt. We have the main topic, kind of a summary. And you have some text that you should be familiar with as you do your research. In addition to what you find in your textbook and through your other research. You have some key terms. And then at the end here, we'll add in uh, a couple key things that you really need to make sure that you do in order to answer this question well. Let's start off by just reading through the question, making sure that you know how to pronounce everything, and seeing if there are any words that we might have an issue with. Number three, what was the Great Compromise, and why was it such a contentious issue at the Philadelphia Convention? So let's look at this first part here, the Great Compromise, uh, and there's some more information later in the in the review here but the great compromise was called the great compromise because it led to the ratification of the constitution you had big states and you had small states and they had a disagreement about how many representatives each state should get the bigger states thought that it should be based on population because then they would get more representatives the smaller states thought that it should all be equal because each each state was an equal part of the country and the population shouldn't matter. The Great Compromise split the legislative branch into two branches, where one, the House of Representatives, the representation was based on state size. So that's why a state like California, which has a much larger population, gets more representatives than a state like Missouri, which gets fewer representatives. But the other part of the legislative branch is the Senate. And in the Senate, each state, regardless of size, gets two representatives. So a state like California, which is huge, gets two representatives, and a state like Missouri gets two representatives. Every state gets two representatives. So that's the basics of the Great Compromise. Contentious right here means that there's disagreement about it. So you need to figure out why the Great Compromise caused so much disagreement. The next part of the question, evaluate this argument advanced at the time of the convention. In the House of Representatives, the states are represented in proportion to their inhabitants, which means that it's based on size. Here, the separate interests will operate with their full force, and the violence of parties can be restrained and quieted only by a body of men less local and dependent. So basically what that part of the question is saying, small states and large states in the House of Representatives get their representative number based on how large or small their states are. So if you have 10 representatives from, let's say, the state of Colorado, those 10 representatives will have to work together to figure out what their state of Colorado wants. If you have 30 representatives from the state of Texas, for example, those 30 representatives have to figure out what their state wants. So each state within its own representation has to figure out what the citizens of each state wants so that they can then make those arguments as the legislative branch creates laws. Let's move on to the next part of the question here. Evaluate this counter-argument currently being advanced. A counter-argument goes against the original argument. The Great Compromise guaranteed that the American constitutional system would forever fall short of the one-person, one-vote rule that is the defining norm of modern democracy, simply because the accident of their residence in the less populous states gives them a bigger political bang for the electoral buck. Now this part of the question is arguing against the Senate. Because it states that a really small state, let's say New Hampshire on the East Coast, a very small state, it gets the same amount of representation in the United States Senate as a really big state like Texas. The idea of one person, one vote is a very important idea in a democracy. 
it is essentially that a democracy is a democracy because each individual gets one vote for representation, so there's nothing that can make one individual more important than another individual. But this argument tries to make the point that residents in a state like New Hampshire actually get more than one vote for one person because in their really, really tiny state, they get the same amount of representation as the really big states. So one person in New Hampshire actually gets more representation than one person in Texas or one person in California, one of the really big states. So this second part of the question is arguing against the Senate, where each state gets equal representation. The first part of the question is arguing uh, in favor of the House of Representatives. So you need to evaluate those arguments, see where you agree, and see where you disagree. There are three main texts that you need to read as you get familiar with this question. The Great Compromise, the actual wording of it, is this first link. Uh, there is a really good radio show that did a special on the Great Compromise, so I linked a transcript. And when you check in on this, I'll have a PDF of this one linked up. But this is a, a separate textbook that I'll uh, put a file on that has a little section on the Great Compromise for you to have. You have a couple key terms, and their uh, definitions are over here in the comments section on the right. Okay, so now things that you need to do. So in order to answer this question really well, let's find three things that you really need to do. The first thing that you really need to do is you need to show that you understand the great compromise and what it is. The judges are going to look for you to describe what the great compromise is and why it's important and you'll probably have to answer a question or two on what the founders were thinking when they created the great compromise. So show that you understand the great compromise and why it is important. The second thing that you need to show is you need to show that you understand how representation works in the House of Representatives and in the Senate. And I spelled that. Oh, there we go. And in the Senate. And then the third thing you need to do is you need to take a stand. And this is going to be a really important part of your four-minute presentation. Once you show that you understand the Great Compromise and once you show that you understand the House and the Senate, Show or take a stand. Which do you agree with? Do you think that uh, there should be equal representation, such as we see in the Senate, or should representation be based on the population, which is what we see in the House of Representatives? And you need, you need to make an argument for which one of those makes more sense uh, or if you think that the current system that we have makes the most sense. So that's question number three. Good luck. Make sure you use all your resources. And as always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask.